It's been 45 years uh, since I wrote my first musical. I was at Laverne College. Our orchestra consisted of three guitar players, one of them my brother Michael, and uh, uh, another brother of mine, uh, Timothy, was just a young boy, but he had acting aspirations, so he was more than glad to play a few parts, including that of the young boy Jesus. My, my musical was a series of biblical skits, and I don't remember much about it, but I do remember that uh, um, there's one in which Jesus is sitting at the table and he's just gobbling his peanut butter and jelly sandwich. His mother Mary comes in and says, slow down when you're eating, Jesus. Do you want people to think you were born in a barn? <laughs> and that's what most people think, as it turns out. This, this is our, our typical Christmas card nativity set, and, and it suits us well. As a matter of fact, it's a little dangerous. No, it's very dangerous to contradict the view that people have. Let's see our next slide. This is Francisco Sanchez de la Brosas, who was a professor of philology at a university in Spain. Philology means love of words. It means he studied words. Very famous scholar. Well, in the words, of Monty Python, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. You either get that or you don't. You can Google it and see it on YouTube. But anyway, but nobody expects, no, let's back, up, let's back up to Francisco. We're not ready to go on yet. Yeah, that's all right. Um, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition had that special power when you mix religion and government to arrest people, never charge them, torture them, make them confess, and then burn them alive in the name of Christ. It's a wonderful situation. Uh, another thing that Christianity has to be proud of. Now, on what crime was Francisco Sanchez de la Brosas arrested when he was turned in by his students in 1585, who probably were thinking, hooray, I don't have to go to class today because my professor is in a dark, dank, prison awaiting torture and brutal death. Well, he didn't deny the virgin birth. He didn't deny the divinity of Jesus Christ. He didn't deny the return of Jesus Christ. All he said was, our Christmas celebrations have it wrong. That word doesn't mean in. There is no fat innkeeper and his wife refusing to find a place for the baby Jesus. It means room. In the house. It means that Joseph, after he met up with his wife to whom he was engaged, took her to Bethlehem, his hometown, where he would be there for the census because that's where he lived. And he took her to his hometown. And he went into his own house, which was owned by the family, and there wasn't enough room in their room for her to give birth, so they went into the main chamber and gave birth there. That was the crime. You can understand why in the 500 years since. Nobody has tried to correct this. But people have known. Now, our translators didn't want to do anything about it. Now let's go to the next slide. This is the Wycliffe Bible, the first English translation, which actually has to be translated into English because that English bears no version, no, no, uh, doesn't bear any resemblance to our English. But she bare her firstborn son, wrapped him in clothes, and laid him in a feed trough, or as he really put it, put him in a cratch, for there was no place for him and no chamber. Didn't say in, chamber. Go on to, go on to Tyndale. Tyndale? was strangled, and then his body burned at the stake for the crime of translating the Bible into English. But his translation is the one on which most translations up to the modern day are based. 1526, she brought forth her first begotten son, laid him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a man wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Next, 
the Geneva Bible, which was far more popular than the King James Version during uh, the lifetime of people at that era, but later the King James became the more popular one. And you'll see, once again, no room for them in the inn. Next, New Revised Standard, which is the most recent version of the King James line. No room for them, no place for them in the inn. Next. Now, today's New International Version, which is the one you can't buy in the United States because it tries to follow what Scripture says and use neutral terms when no gender is mentioned and use male and female terms when the Scripture indicates it. You can buy this in England, but it's hard to find in America because it doesn't suit the people who like the New International Version. But anyway, I like this one a little better. She wrapped them in cloths, placed them, placed them in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. A little better. Next, Common English Bible. There was no place for them in the guest room. And next. She, this is what it should say. She gave birth to her firstborn child, the son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because they had no space in their place to stay. As, uh, next picture, uh, as you can see, a typical home in that time was more like sort of a square or a rectangle, uh, and there's a roof that was used. Sometimes it had turf on the top. Let's do the next picture, the last picture. And now you looked at what, what I showed the kids. You can see inside, there's either an outside staircase or an inside ladder to get to the roof, which they use for storage. You can see animals enter in through the door. There's the feeding trough. There are the uh, people where they're cooking and cleaning and living with the animals. This is archaeologically true. And when the family grew, you built a room on top for them. When Jenny and I went to Guatemala in 2001, we were amazed to see that people built simple homes and there was rebar sticking up because the way you expand it is when your family got bigger, you built on top. So they were already set with the rebar there so they could just build more rooms on top. They grew up. Uh, things haven't changed uh, in the third world very much over two centuries. Uh, but typically then you would build on top. So the meaning of the scripture is simply that Joseph was living in his home. It makes, he didn't want it. you wouldn't travel three days in order to be registered in some town where your ancestors lived. When they taxed you, they wanted to know where you lived. So you registered where you lived. That's where Joseph lived. That's where Joseph lived until Herod decided a couple years later to kill all the male children because he thought there was a king among them. Then Joseph and Mary moved to Egypt, and when Herod died, they just didn't feel that safe moving back to Bethlehem, so that's when they went up to Nazareth to live. That's why Jesus has two hometowns. This is no secret, but you don't want to make the Christmas card makers angry or the people that manufacture all the nativity sets, and this is what had occurred. Now, what does it matter? It's very simple. We're used to thinking, that lousy old innkeeper didn't find room for, the, for Mary and Joseph, for Jesus to be born. They had to go to a cave or a stable because some business person didn't find room for them. Well, they didn't have Howard Johnson's. They didn't have Motel 6. It wasn't like that. You stayed in family homes. You lived in family homes. So instead of blaming somebody else like we always do at Christmas, let's remember what this story is really teaching us. We'd, have, we'd better always be ready with plan B. We don't know when the family's going to expand. We don't know when the child is going to come when you thought you were done having children 15 years later, or just two, Jake. You don't know when there's going to be unexpected people. You might have to have grandma actually move back in the house. 
you might have an adult with special conditions who is going to be living in your house for as long as you are alive. You are probably going to have to make room at some point when you, it is most inconvenient. And during this holiday time, as much as we all love company, it's very easy to grump and to moan and to complain when the unexpected happens, the unexpected that we should have expected. The Christmas story is about your family finding a way to make it work, not about some business person, not about some storekeeper closing the store too early so you can't get in, not about all the motels rooms being taken up within 100 miles of South Bend when Notre Dame plays a home game. It's not about them. It's about us. And over the next couple of weeks, there's going to be things that are inconvenient, unexpected, and worse yet, lifelong, that we will make adjustments for. But this story is about how we do it. Mary had to give birth in the main room of the house because there was no space in their room there in Bethlehem. And of course, once she gave birth and once you got a baby, that dominates everything. We'd like to have that baby quiet in another room, but babies expand their space amazingly large. So do grandmas who come to live with us. So do adults who, ha who had a divorce or got fired and need to come back and live with us. But we can do it. That's how the greatest story ever told begins. Not in a stable, not in a cave, in your house at the worst possible time. And what we often discover then is it turns out to be the most blessed thing that ever happened, especially when we receive it in the right spirit. Let us pray. <sighs> Gracious God, there are still cookies to bake and presents to wrap. There are Christmas specials to watch. There are cars that go belly up at the worst possible time. There are weather forecasts to look at anxiously and travel plans or guest plans to be made. Bless us. Help us to receive in our hearts with joy and only a little grumping all the unexpected things that wait for us. All the things we couldn't possibly expect and yet which we can certainly rejoice about today and every day. These things we pray in your son's name. Amen. By the way, in case you're wondering, De La Brosas was released by the Spanish Inquisition because he had a powerful uh, person uh, in his corner. Unfortunately, that person died about six years later, so he was arrested right back in and died a couple months later. So you can understand why I was a little nervous preaching about what Scripture actually says instead of what we're used to. So I hope that you'll forgive me because I don't expect the Spanish Inquisition either.